Greetings, it's Ian from RTO here. Uh, welcome you to another classic album. And today we have got this little beauty. The self-titled debut album of Tracy Chapman. Now I come across this purely by accident. Back in the day I was a member of the Britannia Music Club and every month you got an editor's pick and if you didn't want it you had to stick up this thing and send it back now yours truly here forgot to do it one month so this turned up on my doorstep and i thought oh never heard of her <laughs> um so i thought okay i will give it a turn if i don't like it I can take it to a second hand record shop in Northampton who will uh, take it off my hands. That's sort of an arrangement, you know. If I took one in I didn't like, yeah, it let me have one and everyone's happy. Uh, so I put it on and was I shocked and I thought, wow, this is brilliant. Uh, oops, it's upside down. We've got the, her on the front, like the cover. On the back, we've got all the lyrics, which I used to love. Uh, this is on the Electra album, if I'm uh, label. Yep, Electra label, the old Electra label. So this is a this is like a first edition of this album. It's in absolute mint condition. It was released uh, on the fifth of April, nineteen eighty-eight. It was recorded in 1987 at the Power Track Studios in Hollywood. Um, she found it hard to get a record deal because it is an acoustic album and no one was seemed to be in, interested, but uh, uh, she was discovered by Tufts University student Brian Copeland, who offered to show her work to his father, who owned a publishing company, however, she didn't. She thought it wasn't um, serious enough. However, uh, if, um, Copeland found a demo of uh, talking about revolution, which he promoted to radio stations, and she was eventually signed up to Electra Records. So it's basically it's her songs are mostly political and social court based and social at the time uh so we got tracy chapman on acoustic guitars and percussion rhythm guitars and vocal ed black plays steel guitar and we've got paulino da costa on percussion denny fongsizer on percussion jack holder plays organ to loot the Loisima, the Boro piano, electric guitar, Hammond organ, and a sitar. Stephen Kaplan plays keyboards and harmonica. Larry Klein is on the bass. David Laflan on uh, electric violin. Bob Marlett on keyboards. First track on the album is talking about revolution. When I put this on, the wow. Loved the arrangement. Great strong vocal from Tracy Chapman. That's my first impression. Of course, she's a good singer. Uh, lovely track. Always one of my favourites. Um, then we get the brilliant Fast Car. I just love this track. Such a catchy melody. Um, there's people that have tried to do covers of this. And to be quite honest, they fail miserably um, there's only one version of this and it's this uh, and then we get across the lines this percussion is fantastic it's done I think kind of with brushes it's got that very sound to it um, and it's got some lovely guitar work in this nice little pastiche guitar pieces lovely track and another great vocal from Tracy 
then we get a thing called behind the wall now this is basically Tracy singing no instruments fantastic bit of the case of the Janis Joplin's uh, she could do it Alanis Morissette can do it without any I think there's one or two others that would probably be good at it and Wilson I can think of she's up there she's got a fantastic voice next track is called baby can I hold you I'd say this for an acoustic track it's quite heavy it's got some nice electric guitar on that this uh, it's not turned up to 11 spinal tap style but it's turned down to a, uh, a very pastiche sort of sound very very good track mountain o things again the percussion percussion on this is just superb different types of um percussion uh and a great vocal from tracy fantastic stuff uh she's got her ticket second favorite track on the album um it's got great little bits of bass in this and a solid solid vocal why that's the next track um, again this is like um, quite heavy for an acoustic track it's got a nice little bit of keyboard in this which just lifts it um, I think that's why it's so good because it's just the keyboard that really makes this track stand out um, For My Lover again another great track and this time we've got a harmonica in the background again lifts this track gives it another layer uh, and it's a really really good track um, then we get if not now again musicianship on this track is fantastic and Tracy's voice is so strong great performance and the last track is called for you and all this is is Tracy and a guitar no drums, no bass, just an acoustic guitar, and it is fantastic. This was one of the best albums I got in 1988. Rock music in 1988, it was either hair metal or overproduced rock music. Not a good time for rock music, um, but this was a breath of fresh air it's not overly produced it's just go into the studio plug your instruments in and go and that's what I like about this album um, I think I've only got this album and a greatest hits album but this is just terrific it's a Sunday morning album if you haven't listened to it go and listen to it because it is it still holds up today it's one of the 80s albums that doesn't date that's what I like about it you put some songs albums on that were made in the 80s and you go oh this is dated because of the production put this on this could have been recorded yesterday that's how good it is so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 9 out of 10 okay then uh, what we got coming up well of course we've got the Christmas quiz on uh, the 23rd of December now I've had to change one of the um, rounds I was going to do a music backwards beat the intro but uh, we've had a look into this uh, one of my back ball room boys uh, my mate from Ireland, Dave, he he knows the ins and outs of all these technical stuff and he says you may, even though you're playing it backwards, if it's recognised you could get your fingers burnt. So instead of getting my fingers burnt, I've scrapped that round, but I've put another round in. I've actually put another picture round in. Um, so we've got two picture rounds. One so one will be on album covers and the other is on pop stars basically 
um, that have been on, which I've um, done shows on on RTO. So that's coming up. If you want a copy of this, as you see, the email address is at, at the bottom. So that's all for today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, of course, and we've got part one of the Jeff Lynn story. The first band that he was in, a band called The Idle Race. And how many of you out there knew that he was in a band called The Idle Race? Well, we're going to look at their albums. Not many, but it was a start. And then we've got Retro Ranking. Uh, it's a bit of a special one tomorrow. Um, as we're coming up towards Crimbo, I th this is the first of three shows I'm doing at Christmas specials. So tomorrow's will be the 10 worst Christmas songs ever. Uh, plus a handful of um, honourable mentions. Bit of fun. I was listening to the songs over the weekend. Oh, gold, some of them are terrible. Um, so that's coming up. So that's all for tomorrow. So until then, I will speak to you tomorrow. Take care for now.